as I was saying, the the NED has utilized its grants to fund some very shady organizations that either have directly supported terrorists like the Cuban American National Foundation or Freedom House, another quasi-private, quasi-public group that the United States uses to get across the idea of American-style democracy abroad. In the case of the Cuban American uh, National Foundation, the NED gave $250,000 to the group in 1990-92. That group then directly financed uh, Luis Posada Carriles, who blew up an airliner in 1976. He was tried and convicted in absentia in Venezuela. And then he admitted that he was involved in a series of bomb explosions in Havana hotels in uh, 1997. He, he, he expressed remorse that he had to engage in such activity, but he admitted that he had done it. The NED financed the group that financed him. In the case of Freedom House, the NED uh, has given money to them, although I don't know that any money directly went to this in the 80s. The 1980s, Freedom House was involved with uh, significant uh, parties in the Afghanistan conflict uh, with, when, with the Russian invasion and what have you. And in fact, at their Peshawar Institute, they trained portions of the Mujahideen who would then engage in guerrilla warfare against the Russians. And we all know what the Mujahideen would later do that was so infamous. 9-11. So I think it's important to note that, you know, by giving money to organizations like Freedom House that then support, organ you know, organizations and individuals like the Mujahideen and, uh, you know, the aforementioned uh, Jose Posada Carriles, you, you have to realize that, that that really looks bad on not just on the NED, but on us as a general public because that's taxpayer supported. And since it's not it's not a it's not a secret, it's not well known, but it's not a secret that the NED, you know, gets its money, like I said, ninety-nine percent of it straight from the State Department, and the State Department individually approves all grants that are given, it means that it's a de facto support of terrorism, sometimes in more more directly in, in certain cases than others. In one case, in fact, that that's become pretty infamous as one of the barometers for the standard of international terrorism is the uh, Iran-Contra affair, the Nicaraguan conflict during the 1980s with the United States. The NED was heavily involved in this. <clears throat> in fact, in 1987, the uh, White House press secretary stated that the NED actually ran Project Democracy, which was the name of the operation that Oliver North had given uh, the uh, clandestine support for the terrorist Contra organization based out of Honduras operating with money got by selling arms to Iran illegally after Congress had you know, explicitly passed legislation forbidding explicitly that funding the Contras. And it's not exactly true that the NED ran it because Oliver North, again, was engaged in uh, other illegal activities. What the NED did essentially was fund groups in Nicaragua that would start, a le you know, start what would appear to be legitimate political dissent, but it would in actuality were almost heavily, almost entirely financed by the United States and essentially served as American mouthpiece for American interests in Nicaragua. In 1990, and again, the, the Iran-Contra affair happens in the 80s. In 1990, uh, they supported a group called uh, UNO, and they sent them uh, $30 million for the 1990 elections, which UNO did win because of substantial America, not just this support, but diplomatic pressure by America essentially saying that they were going to, we were going to keep up the low-intensity conflict, a.k.a. terrorism, by continuing to support the Contras unless the Nicaraguan people voted you know, the way we wanted them to, so they, so they did, but not, not, not by a large margin by any means. But they gave $30 million of support to UNO in that, that election, which would be essentially like putting $700 million into an American election. And you can only imagine the uproar that we would hear from Fox News and MSNBC were it to be found out that $700 million worth of foreign money had been implanted within the confines of the American electoral process. Uh, essentially, the, the way they put this money in, again, no direct, no direct support, but they, they financed the groups that made up the coalition that made UNO. Also, there were large grants of... Uh, especially earmarked for odd things within this aid, like $1.3 million for, for, for car rental vehicles, which would have paid for over 2,000 vehicles at Nicaragua's 1990 rate. So you wonder where that money went. Um, money was spent only on UNO in that election, despite the fact that there were eight other uh, opposition groups you know, running. And, and if you were really interested in the promulgation of democracy and not just polyarchy, where a small... 
a small a small group you know small groups of people a couple groups of elite people get to make decisions the general public gets to ratify them then you would support more than just one uh, one you know you support more than just one group and I think another thing that we have to highlight again is that the State Department approves all NED grants and this is going to have an impact on the ideology of groups that that get that take that money because what winds up happening is the State Department's not going to you know continue to funnel funds to groups that wind up adopting ideologies opposed to the United States based interests so once they find themselves dependent on the aid, they have to operate within the constraints set forth by the State Department. In the meantime, as, the, as those groups become less radical, actual radical groups dry up or get drowned out because they either don't have the funds to continue or the funds they have are so meager they don't have the wherewithal to compete with the media blitz and the constant propaganda that can be put forth when you're constantly funneling large amounts of money into the global south. I think it's essential that we that we relook that we take another look at <clears throat> programs like the National Endowment for Democracy and Freedom House. And I think it's essential that while that if we're going to continue to tout ourselves as some kind of bastion for freedom and democracy, we really ought just, we really ought to start acting like it in our relations with the third world. Stop subversively funding elections, stop putting a ton of money into into people who agree with us while drowning out actual popular voices within the global south.